In this video, we're going to look at two more involved examples of Lewis structures. So the first example that I want to look at is the HCN molecule. So this is one hydrogen, one carbon, and one nitrogen. So we're going to begin this like we began both of the examples in the previous video, where we're just going to look at all of the valence electrons that are going to be in this molecule. So how many valence total? Right. This is always where you want to start. You want to figure out how many total valence electrons you have in your molecule. Right. So we know for hydrogen, we're going to have one. Right. So that's coming from the hydrogen atom. Plus for carbon, we're going to have four valence electrons. Right. 2s2, 2p2. So we're going to have four valence electrons that are coming from the carbon atom. And for nitrogen, we're going to have five. Right, so five valence electrons for the nitrogen atom, four for the carbon, one for the hydrogen. To figure out how many valence electrons we're gonna have in HCN total, we just add all of them up. And so you add five plus four plus one, that gives you 10 valence electrons. Right, so again, the next step is just that you're going to form bonds between all of the atoms. So now we wanna form bonds. Right, so forming the bonds here, we're just gonna form them in a line. So we got H bonded to C, bonded to N, bonded to the nitrogen. So, um, so in this case, right, we've formed a bond between all of the atoms and we've accounted for four valence electrons by doing this, right? We have one bond here, one bond here. Each one is two electrons being shared between the atoms. So that's going to give us four uh, valence electrons that we've accounted for. So now we have to account for the other valence electrons. So um, one way that you might think about doing this, uh, we have six more that we have to account for. I've told you that um, the valence electrons are gonna go to the most electronegative atom. In this case, that's gonna be nitrogen. So you might think about doing this, where you just say, okay, I got six more valence electrons. So I'm just gonna fill up the rest in nitrogen. Boom, I'm done. This is not correct. And the reason that it's not correct, right? So I'm just gonna put an X next to this guy. And the reason that it's not correct is because your carbon still has an incomplete octet here, right? So your octet for the carbon is not filled. Hydrogen's fine with its two electrons. Nitrogen's fine here with uh, the two electrons being shared with carbon and the six electrons involved in lone pairs. But carbon is deficient at its octet. So it, this one is not gonna work. So let's try something else. Let's fill up the carbon octet and see what happens. So if we fill up carbon's octet, we'll need two there. And that leaves us with two electrons left. We've counted for eight, so we just put two here, right? So now carbon has a filled octet, but now nitrogen's octet is not filled, right? So that guy doesn't have a full octet. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what, what are we supposed to do here? If we can't fill the uh, octet of nitrogen with lone pairs or carbon with uh, lone pairs, then what do we do? Well, this is where the concept of multiple bonding comes into play. So uh, Lewis structures can have what's known as multiple bonds. So these come in mainly two different flavors. Either you have double bonds or you have triple bonds. A double bond is denoted by a double dash. And this denotes the sharing of four electrons, right? So instead with one dash, you're sharing two electrons. With two dashes, you're sharing four electrons. And same thing, same concept with triple bonds, right? We will use three dashes to denote a triple bond. And this is going to denote six electrons being shared between the two atoms. So this is another tool that you can employ to fill all of the octets for each of the atoms in your molecule um, and get a correct Lewis structure representation where the octet for all of your atoms are filled. So if we're using multiple bonds, we can actually easily fill these octets. So we have this same general framework. And what I'm gonna do is triple bond 
carbon to nitrogen. When I do that, I've already filled the octet to carbon, right? So carbon's good. And at this point, we've accounted for two, four, six, eight electrons. So we only have two more. And we only need two more electrons here for nitrogen to fill its octet. So now we give those lone pair electrons to nitrogen. Now we have an accurate Lewis structure representation of HCN, right? So, you know, whenever you're doing this, this is going to kind of become instinctive. As you start to do more examples, you'll start to notice the pattern of atoms that involve themselves in double bonds or triple bonds. But um, if you ever get stuck in a situation where you're like, I'm, I'm distributing all the lone pairs and I don't know what else to do, start playing around with these multiple bonds, double bonds and triple bonds. And, and then you're usually going to get uh, to a correct Lewis structure representation that way. Okay. So that's HCN. The second example that I wanted to look at is an ion. So um, all the examples that we've looked at so far have been neutrally charged molecules. What happens when you have an ion? So let's look at NH4 plus, right? So let's look at this cation. So this is an ion, right? So you're going to start this problem the exact same way that you start the others, right? You're going to count up how many uh, valence electrons you have total. So I'll just put valence total question mark how many valence electrons do we have total well we got four hydrogens so we got one plus one plus one plus one right all of these are coming from the four hydrogens right so one electron from each hydrogen and for nitrogen we're going to have five right just like we had here right nitrogen is going to contribute five valence electrons now, if we have a cation, keep in mind what that means, right? That means we have one less electron than we have a proton. So what you're going to have to do in order to account for that positive charge, you're going to subtract one electron, right? So if it's a cation, you're going to subtract one electron. If it's an anion, you're going to add one electron. In this case, we have a cation, so this is going to account for the plus charge. We're subtracting one electron, right? So when you add all of this up, right, you add five plus four here, that gives you nine. You subtract one, that gives you eight valence electrons, right? So here in this case, the, uh, the Lewis structure is pretty simple. You're going to have nitrogen in the center, and you're going to bond it to the four hydrogens so that they're satisfied and that's pretty much the lewis structure now what we do in order to denote the charge is we usually put this guy in parentheses some people don't use the parentheses i like to um, you put the molecule in parentheses and you put the charge on the outside right so this is denoting that this entire molecule has a plus one charge Right? So that's why I like to use the parentheses so that it's not ambiguous that you're talking about this entire molecule. So everything in parentheses, this molecule has a total charge of plus one. Okay, so those were two more involved um, Lewis structure problems. So one introducing the concept of double bonds and triple bonds, and the other case, how do you deal with charges? Now keep in mind, you wanna keep this straight in your head with ions. If it's a cation, if it's a plus charge, you're subtracting an electron. If it's a negatively charged ion, an anion, you're going to be adding electrons to that total, right? So, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, keep these two concepts straight and try to get some practice with both of them.